Founded over a century ago, Cartier's legacy left an indelible mark on the world of fashion and jewelry. With its headquarters nestled in the heart of Paris, the city of romance and glamour, Cartier quickly became a symbol of refinement and a timeless allure. From the humble beginnings of its founder to its prominence on the wrists of royalty and celebrities, the Cartier story is a testament to passion, creativity, and unwavering dedication. So, fasten your seatbelts as we embark on a voyage through Cartier's unparalleled craftsmanship, exceptional designs, and the allure of its illustrious clientele. Let's celebrate the legacy of Cartier, a beacon of elegance, and discover the brilliance that has enchanted the world for generations. Get ready to be captivated as we unveil the hidden tale of Cartier. Cartier's Humble Beginnings Our journey begins in the early 19th century with the talented Louise Francis. Francois Cartier, a young man with a passion for watchmaking and jewelry, sent by his father, a gunpowder manufacturer, to study under the guidance of jeweler and watchmaker Adolphe Picard, Louis embarked on a path that would shape the destiny of Cartier. Working in Picard's modest workshop in the crowded streets of Paris in the 1840s, Louis faced grueling conditions. Alongside other workers, he toiled for 15 hours a day under the watchful eye of a foreman with a whip. However, this challenging environment only fueled Lewis's determination to excel in his craft. Years of dedicated apprenticeship allowed Lewis to develop a profound love for watchmaking, becoming a master in his own right. Armed with his acquired skills and unwavering passion, he took a significant step in his journey, acquiring the small shop on Rue Montaigne from his employer. It was at this pivotal moment in history that the Cartier brand was born. As an apprentice, Lewis had witnessed the struggle his employer's company faced in achieving even modest success. Undeterred, he set out to make transformative changes to the business. Lewis recognized the potential in diversifying the store's offerings, expanding beyond watchmaking and introducing unique jewelry designs and innovative fashion ideas. This strategic move was aimed at appealing to a broader range of customers, and it proved to be a turning point for Cartier. In 1853, the Cartier brand had moved to a chic Parisian street, strategically located close to the Palais Royal and the Stock Exchange. This new location caught the eye of the elite, including the Empress Eugenie and Princess Mathilde, the Emperor Napoleon III's second cousin. The exposure to high society proved immensely successful for the Burgoyning brand. The demand for Cartier's exquisite creation grew exponentially over the following years, and the young brand began making significant profits, selling hundreds of pieces of jewelry to the French aristocracy. The company's fortunes seemed destined for further prosperity. However, not everything was smooth sailing for Cartier. The turbulent year of 1848 saw the outbreak of the Paris Uprising, where the working-class citizens rose up against the wealthy who had long exploited the country. This revolt presented challenges for jewelry businesses, including Cartier. Despite the upheaval, the company managed to endure and emerge on the other side thanks to Louis-Francois Cartier's unwavering spirit and business acumen. He proved to be unstoppable in the face of adversity, and his determination set the stage for Cartier's incredible journey to come. Triumph Amidst Challenges As Cartier weathered the storm of the 1848 Paris uprising, challenges loomed on the horizon. The revolt saw working-class citizens rising against the wealthy, including the aristocracy who were Cartier's clientele. The turmoil made it exceedingly difficult for jewelers like Cartier to maintain their livelihoods. However, despite the adversity, the company managed to persevere and emerged on the other side, largely due to the vision and resilience of Louis-Francois Cartier. The successful navigation of the uprising laid the groundwork for Cartier's continued growth. Over the next two decades, the company made steady progress, further solidifying its position in the jewelry market. It was during this time that Alfred, the son of Louis-Francois Cartier, entered the scene and played a pivotal role in the brand's expansion. With a strong sense of business acumen, Alfred Cartier demonstrated a keen understanding of the evolving luxury landscape. He was driven by a desire to elevate the company's status and achieve international acclaim. Unlike his father, Alfred was ambitious and forward-thinking, with a keen eye for spotting opportunities. As the visionary leader behind the brand's expansion, Alfred took strategic steps to position Cartier as a global luxury brand. In the end, it was his business savvy that introduced the Cartier name to royal families across Europe and beyond. In the 1860s, Alfred devised a historical stroke of genius that would cement Cartier's position as a top jeweler in Europe. During the Paris Commune in 1870, a socialist revolution that sought to overthrow the aristocracy, the elite were fleeing the city, seeking a way to safeguard their wealth. 
Cartier seized this unexpected opportunity and offered the aristocrats an escape route by purchasing their valuable assets, particularly their precious jewelry, at a fraction of their true value. This bold move allowed Cartier to quickly amass an impressive collection of jewelry, making the company the proud owner of some of the most exquisite pieces in France. The Paris Commune was short-lived and as stability returned to the country, people could once again spend their wealth freely. Alfred's calculated decision to seize the opportunity proved to be a masterstroke. The collection of exquisite jewelry became the cornerstone of Cartier's success, solidifying its reputation as a premier luxury jewelry brand in France and beyond. This period marked the turning point for Cartier's expansion into the realm of international luxury. International Recognition During the Paris Commune of 1870, Alfred Cartier's brilliance and quick thinking became evident. The Socialist Revolution had plunged the city into chaos, and the aristocrats were fleeing for their lives. With their access to banks restricted, they found themselves unable to access their wealth. In their desperate need to escape the city's violence, they turned to selling their valuable assets, particularly their prized jewelry. Alfred Cartier recognized the unique opportunity that had presented itself. With little time and money, he swiftly offered the aristocrats just cents on the dollar in exchange for their most valuable possessions. Sensing their urgency, many aristocrats accepted the deal, giving away their finest jewelry to raise funds for their escape. Cartier acquired exquisite pieces of jewelry from some of the wealthiest individuals in France. By the time the Paris Commune ended in 1871, Cartier was no longer a mere jewelry retailer. It had evolved into a high-end jewelry house with one of the most extraordinary collections in the country. The unprecedented move solidified Cartier's position as a leading luxury jeweler and set the stage for its eventual international success. With political stability returning to France, the wealthy were once again free to spend their money at will. The newfound collection of exquisite jewelry enabled Cartier to cater to a growing clientele with a refined taste for luxury. It also set the stage for Cartier's expansion beyond the borders of France. France. As the 20th century dawned, Cartier's reputation and influence began to transcend national boundaries. In 1904, Cartier received its first royal warrant from King Edward VIII of England, who famously referred to Cartier as the Jeweler of Kings and the King of Jewelers. The royal warrant granted Cartier the prestigious title of the official purveyor of the British royal family. This endorsement by the British monarchy elevated Cartier's status and solidified its reputation as a trusted luxury jeweler. It opened doors to a wider international clientele, including aristocrats, celebrities, and socialites across Europe and beyond. As the first decade of the 20th century progressed, Cartier experienced an unprecedented surge in popularity. Its creative designs and exceptional craftsmanship captured the imagination of the elite, leading to an increasing number of customized jewelry requests. The brand became synonymous with elegant style and luxury, further fueling its international acclaim. Under the leadership of Alfred Cartier's sons, Louis, Pierre, and Jacques, the brand expanded its presence beyond France. Louis Cartier managed the Paris branch, moving it to a fashionable shopping street, Rue de la Paix, in 1899. The new location accentuated Cartier's shift from retailing to designing and manufacturing jewelry. In 1917, Louis Cartier introduced the iconic Cartier tank wristwatch, inspired by the tanks he had seen in action on the Western Front during World War I. The tank became an instant hit and found its way onto the wrists of influential figures, including Jackie Kennedy, Princess Diana, and Vies Saint Laurent. Meanwhile, Pierre Cartier set up the Cartier branch in New York City in 1909, followed by his brother Jacques, who opened the London store the next year. Cartier's international presence expanded attracting a global clientele that appreciated the brand's innovative designs and timeless luxury international expansion, and iconic designs. In the early 20th century, Cartier's success in France paved the way for its ambitious international expansion. Under the leadership of Louis, Pierre, and Jacques Cartier, the brand established branches in two of the world's most prominent cities, New York and London. In 1909, Pierre Cartier set up the Cartier branch in New York City, strategically positioning the brand in one of the world's leading centers for culture, commerce, and finance. The New York store quickly became a hotspot for the city's elite, attracting socialites, business tycoons, and celebrities alike. With its elegant and distinctive designs, Cartier captured the hearts of a growing American clientele. The following year, in 1910, Jacques Cartier opened the Cartier store in London. London, the capital of the British Empire, offered immense potential for Cartier's expansion and global recognition. The London store became a symbol of refinement and luxury, attracting the British aristocracy and even members of the royal family. Louis Cartier, who remained in charge of the Paris branch, continued to create exceptional designs that solidified Cartier's reputation as a pioneer in jewelry and watchmaking. One of Louis's most iconic designs, the Cartier Tank wristwatch, made its debut in 1917. 
Inspired by the tanks used during World War I, the Tank watch revolutionized the concept of wristwatches and became a timeless classic. The design of the Cartier Tank was bold and unique, featuring clean lines, a rectangular case, and Roman numerals on the dial. The watch's aesthetic elegance, combined with its technical precision, quickly caught the attention of influential figures worldwide. The Tonk wristwatch became a favorite among celebrities, artists, and prominent leaders, reinforcing Cartier's status as the preferred jeweler of the elite. Famous personalities like Muhammad Ali, Andy Warhol, Ingrid Bergman, and Clark Gable were among those known to wear the iconic timepieces. The watch's popularity was not limited to its aesthetic appeal. Its significance extended beyond the realm of fashion. The Cartier Tonk watch became a symbol of cultural sophistication and refinement, reflecting the spirit of the era in which it was born. Its enduring appeal and timeless design have kept it in vogue even to this day. As Cartier's international presence expanded, so did its roster of esteemed clientele. The surviving members, driven by their passion for exceptional craftsmanship and innovation, ensured that Cartier continued to be a brand of choice for the world's most discerning individuals. The Cartier Tank watch, along with other iconic designs, established Cartier's position as a trendsetter in the world of luxury, jewelry, and horology. The brand's reputation for elegance, craftsmanship, and innovation continued to grow, cementing its status as a global icon of luxury. Modern Success and Legacy In the decades that followed its international expansion and the introduction of iconic designs, Cartier's reputation and legacy continued to grow and thrive. Despite the ever-changing landscape of fashion and design trends, Cartier maintained its position as a pinnacle of French luxury, consistently delivering exceptional craftsmanship and innovative designs. Throughout the 20th and 21st centuries, Cartier continued to adapt and evolve, meeting the demands and preferences of discerning customers worldwide. The band's ability to strike a balance between tradition and modernity allowed it to remain relevant and appealing to new generations of luxury consumers. Cartier's dedication to excellence and attention to detail ensured that each piece bearing the Cartier name was not merely a piece of jewelry or watch, but a work of art.